All right, what's up, dude? Welcome to welcome to Squawk Out. I'm like super pumped up to have you, man. What's up, man? <laughs> um, so we should talk about first of all, like how we met each other, and well, first of all, tell me what you do. And and we, I don't think I don't think we even discussed this before the podcast. But are we on a first name basis? Or are we on a first name last name basis? Like, how are we doing this? What's a first name, last name basis? Like, like you know, are we going to mention your last name? Nah, nah. Okay, right. Everybody will know me they don't. First name don't okay? Know. Yeah, first all name. All right, fine. okay. All right, so this is Mike. Mike, you are I a... teach what? English. Teach English. Literature, not English. English literature. literature. Uh, yeah. Okay, and you're a public... Public, uh, uh... Public educator? Educator? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I wasn't sure... Actually, we didn't even discuss any of this. We just came in here like fucking balls blazing. <laughs> um, so you're a public educator. You teach literature at what level? Uh, all levels. I've taught community college. Uh, fucking up to whatever. up to community college. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, so what? has uh what led you to becoming an educator first of all have you had any like uh special experiences or like uh inspiring moments that took you to that point <laughs> yeah when i realized that i couldn't do anything with an english degree <laughs> when you couldn't do anything that an english when i couldn't do anything with an english degree i got inspired to teach <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, okay. yeah, I was, I was pretty inspired. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, <laughs> dude, you cannot continue like this all fucking night, dude. <laughs> You're gonna have to let me like hold a hold 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 a, a thought without dropping all these freaking meme bombs. So. Uh, <laughs> Damn, dude, I can't walk you through this, dude. Tell me about what you do for a living, dude. <laughs> I teach literature. I teach people how to write. I teach. What? What? I teach. Uh, I've taught creative writing. I've taught <laughs> literature, American literature. You know, so, I got a master's in. I got a master's in English literature. So. <laughs> so, so you couldn't do shit with an English degree. Why did you get an I mean, English? Why did you get an English degree in the first place? You're pulling. I mean, you can. I mean, you you can do anything with an English degree. I mean, you're, you know, it's not like it's just teaching. Uh, I mean, you you can you can be a technical writer. You can be uh, uh, an editor. I mean, I mean, a bunch of famous people are, are English but, majors. But not a lot of people get that those jobs. Like th those jobs are highly sought after, right? Like for example, no, the editor. Um, no, it just takes certain personality type. That's it. You know whether you want to do that kind of work, you know, because you, you have like the, on the one hand, you have like the inspirational English, like, you know, section of it, you know, like, Oh, you know, Thoreau and Whitman and, you know, Hemingway and all you that sound garbage. Like you get that... annoyed by those types of people that are just like, No, so... I'm one of those types of people. I'm, I'm 100% one of those types of people. And then you have the, I mean, I'm not annoyed at any English major. Uh, I enjoy, I enjoy talking to English majors. Uh, and then on the other side, you have, you know, like the technical aspect of it, which is, I mean, anything from an executive producer to an editor to, you know, I mean, the list goes on and on. It's just not, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm an, I have an accounting degree, so I'm going to be an accountant and that's what I'm going to do. It, you know, it's more of a, of a yeah. broad stroke brush than it is a fine detail brush, you know? What, uh, what, it, so, so then what do you read? What, it, what is the, what? What would your students say that you are the most annoying with? You know, is it Thoreau? Is it like what do you, you mean know, most Victorian? annoying with? Like what's your like what's your bag? Like what's your favorite thing? Oh, uh, I don't know, man. It, do you have like a like a subgenre that you're that you're partial to? Mm, 
I mean, just anything anyone's interested in when you talk about lit, you know, when you talk about at least American lit, uh, you know, anything with the jazz age, you know, postmodernism. I studied a lot of postmodernism in, in graduate that, school. Dude? Explain postmodernism to my dumb ass because I know, like, it has to do with, like, I don't know, punk kids in the 90s or something like that, or maybe they just reference. No, 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 that's that actually is probably going into post postmodernism. They they don't have a name for it. It just it's kind of it's kind of already, you know, the way a, a wave washes up on shore and you have the remnants of, you know, the you know, the the floats them on the on the sand, you know, it's 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 just left over from an alt from a genre that's already kind of peaked and then has eroded and it's so with but with postmodern specifically well they're just movements like you know they're they're just movements of 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 ideas you know that have progressed into something new and of course everything after world war ii is you know that's that's where you get you know that's that's where you start seeing uh some postmodernism uh toward i don't know maybe the 50s you know, like I mean, you 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 know the the artists. Uh, God damn it, what's his name? Uh, the guy that does. Are you talking about film? Like no, well everything. I mean, like l- literature is not its own genre that goes through like different uh, books with words on it. That it, no, it can, it can only be <laughs> literature if it's a book with words in it or what? No, well like if people think like oh like literature has its own movement and then art has its own movement. They're they're all moving. In the same direction, art, film, you know, you, you get a lot of avant garde, especially, you know, coming from, you know, European countries that were, you know, that were just coming out of, com- you know, or going into communism, heavy communism. You know, you had a lot of movements that people were exploring. It's it, it's just a natural flow of, of were people. There, were, like, there, of were there uh, uh, literature movements or similar movements, I should say, uh, in the, in the, uh, like the the communist or the or the or like soviet union and a, as well as like nazi germany like did they have their own kind yeah. of things that oh did, yeah or or did it always cross like for example you can get a horror movie in 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 german or in english but but it's all horror like did they have anything specific to them or that they birthed yeah uh as a matter of fact i remember uh my junior senior year in at UT, I had taken a uh, Russian avant garde, Russian, uh, <laughs> I can't even pronounce it now. Uh, avant garde? Yeah, uh, Russian avant garde film of 19, 1917 to 1937. And we just moved through the progression of avant garde film. <laughs> God damn it, I, can't, I cannot pronounce that right now. Uh, like what, it, in film, yeah. Well, uh, like that movement of, of film specific, you know, to you know, like the the ideologies that that, that were moving forward then. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, but do they have a name? I guess is what. Um... Hold on one sec. <laughs> Take this show over for a minute. I have to see what's going on with this. Hello. <laughs> I think he's ordering a pizza. And they're like, "This is Domino's." Okay. Can I cuss on here? Yeah, it's just nothing super vulgar. Uh, was, Can I say the F word or no? <laughs> yeah, just as long as you're not like talking about like who you're gonna fuck. No, or no, 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 no. Do it like we gotta like. No, it. not like that. I'm yeah, talking just, about like just, oh I, fuck. Like, yeah, I mean, it's give like, it an old fuck, you know, or something. It's language. Like, just don't be vulgar, you know. Just like don't talk about killing babies or anything. I don't know the rules, so. Nah, that's. I mean, so, I took that a long time ago, though. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't remember half the shit I learned. You know. Yeah. Um. And so. So uh, you're a teacher. Yeah. Wait. 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 Let's. But we, 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 that's why we're having a problem because we went right to the end. What do you mean went right like to we the start, end? Like we started at the beginning and we went right to the oh, end. Oh, who gives a shit that's about my, that? That's my bad. Dude. That's my bad. Oh no, so, that's whatever. So after. Wait, 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 wait. After your mother birthed you. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the uh, David Copperfield from? Uh, in, I'm gonna I'm gonna don't... I'm gonna lose the David Copperfield. Oh reference. god damn it! Anyway, uh, okay, wait, real quick, back to movements. There's certain movements in lit are not in lit in thought and literature mirrors that film mirrors that. You know, uh, if you look at Stanley Kubrick, 
that's you know that's postmodernism. You know when you when you look at what he did with uh, God damn it, what's that name of the of that of that movie? Uh, Full Metal Jacket. You know it's what it is. It's just a uh, what I mean a conscientious objector to war. You know playing the part of of military man. You know, and how how that related to a bigger global idea of of humanity, you know, and, and that's 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 postmodernism. You know, that's that's taking a different view from what modernism once you know, or I guess Americana, you know, was Americana, of that's the soldier, the John Wayne, you know. And, and, but even even that's very romantic. Is like is all postmodernism romantic, or is all romanticism postmodern? <laughs> fuck you up. Wait, there. what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say say that again. <laughs> Look, okay, romanticism is its own movement. Uh, okay. Yeah, the romantics but, are their own but movement. What you just described, you know, the the soul, the honorable soldier, you know, coming home from yeah, fucking John Wayne, the dude. War and, you know, to, to his wholesome wife who's been waiting there the whole time. Yeah, dude, fucking doing laundry, like throwing it over the fucking the fucking steel lines, and then he's like standing behind a fucking sheet that's flapping in the wind. Dude. <laughs> but but you know what? We got WAP in twenty twenty, so it's like a trade off, right? <laughs> that's why she's doing the fucking laundry, dude. Is fucking WAP. <laughs> you gotta watch that shit. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, dude, it's it's not romantic. Like the idea of Full Metal Jacket is anti-romanticism. Because when you look at Torah, 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 or you look at you know whatever John Wayne fucking film is out there, they're, they they romanticize you know war. You know, it's like this heroic fucking jump off the boat, soldier, and I'm gonna kill me some you know whatever, and then. What do they call them? Jerry's, or I don't know what they called the Germans back then, you know. But then, like, it's you know, and but then you look at what Kubrick did, and it's just this, you know, holy shit! I'm staring at a dead body. My fucking best friend just died, you know. And Animal says it when 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 Kubrick's doing the the, the spinning around the around the so the the perspective is from the dead body looking at what people are saying as they're looking upon the dead body, and he says, "Better you than me, bro," you know. Yeah, yeah you know, he's like. Fucking a, and then one of the Marines says Semper Fi, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, you fucking believe in that stupid shit." And you know, he's like, "Well, if we're gonna die, you, you might as well die for something that you believe in." And then he says, "I die for one thing, Poon Tang." Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's just a reflection of what a real soldier, you know, what you know, might you know, the the conflict within killing another human being you know no, no one explores that yeah. you know who gives a shit if it's someone on the <laughs> bad side who's who's bad you kubrick know they're fucking name some of the i can't think of it off the top of my head some of the other movies that kubrick did he did uh, eyes wide shut eyes wide shut yeah uh the shining 2001 right 2001 a space odyssey which i think is a fantastic movie yeah. i like the sequel some people hate the sequel Oh, I've never seen the sequel. Was it Kubrick that did the sequel? Yeah, I think it was called like 2002. 2020. <laughs> it was called two, 2001 January 2nd. <laughs> God damn it, Joel. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 I did not see the sequel. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> what is it called? What is it called? What is it called? <laughs> Dude, I'll look it up. What's it called? I mean, do, do you know what it's called? Stop, dude. Stop. It was like... 
But like, uh, um, 2011. <laughs> 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 was, it, was it really called 2011? <laughs> was that what it was really called? <laughs> Some fucking arbitrary year. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Uh, <laughs> Alright, we're not gonna talk about the movie anymore. So we can't talk about Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god damn, dude. <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah, I just throw like all the cold water in his mouth. <laughs> Don't spit on my mic. Now, now, you're, now you're spoken like a true English major. <laughs> You Throw all that are, shit out the window, dude. No one cares about it. You guys are you guys are morbid about literature the way like doctors are about like, death, dude. <laughs> I guess maybe because when you dwell it, when you sit in it all day, you're like, fuck, might as well make light of this that's, of all this. Yeah, that's like a coping mechanism, I think. Nah, man, but literature changed my life, though. But for real, yeah, it, it really did. It's what fucking made me go to UT. I was in the fucking military. Fucking sitting there. All right, let's try this experimental concept and go backwards, like in sequential order. So before you were a teacher, you went to UT, right? Yeah, I, I, I was at UT for four years. How did I that stayed go? an extra year. I had transferred in, so I transferred you in as, an extra as, year as a by freshman. Choice or? Yeah, dude, you you, you want to fucking leave that place? That's like being well, that's in the good. bosom of of I mean, <laughs> of warmth. Youth. You know, yeah, Texas yeah. youth and. You know, you're at the pinnacle of, you know, of cool Metropolitan and and... youth, though, right? Would you say that UT is, uh, is a liberal school? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I, I went into UT. Con- I mean, you remember me from high school. I was conservative as fuck. Uh, I, and then I, you know, and then, then I got to UT. And I, the first, one, one of the first, goddamn, uh, my uncle had a conversation with me and he said, uh, he was like, Mike, you're going to a very secular school. Cause you know, my, my uncle, he's, he's, he's a Christian guy, you know? And you know, respect to that, that, you know, that's what he is, you know? Um, he's like, you're going to a very secular school. Don't, don't let the liberalism change your mind. I was like, never, I'm a soldier of the conservative party. Pause, yeah. yeah. You know, never will I bow to that you know, to that indoctrination. Right, yeah, you were spirited about it. And then I got to my dorm when my dad was dropping me off as a 24-year-old freshman. And uh, I look, and I'm like, this is my roommate. Like, you know, because in the military, you know, you, you're, you're forced with some, you know, dickhead from South Arkansas, you know, or whatever, and he's got his own, you know, his own thing, and... And that's, you know, and that's why I'm like, I wonder who my roommate is. I wonder when we'll party on 6th Street and lay bitches. This was, and... this was your roommate? No, no. This is my idea of oh, what yeah, I yeah. thought college was going to be. Uh-huh. And then he walks in and he's like, uh, I'm going to change his name. He's like, he's like, hi, I'm Mark. And I was like, and I, I looked at my dad and I was like, wait a minute. You know, and then, and then he's like, nice to meet you guys. I'm your roommate. And we go, and uh, we, my dad's like, you roommate gay? And I was like, yeah, dad, I'm going to change rooms. <laughs> it, dude. So your roommate was gay, and your dad found out? <laughs> well, my dad was with me. We were like, holy shit, this guy's gay. Like, oh, I'm, oh. I'm going to be bunking with the, you know, dude, in, in the military, you can't be fucking, right, you can't yeah, just, there was, like. There was still a lot of homophobia at the time. Yeah. Um. Did you, so did you end up changing dorms? Well, I wanted to. I was like, dude, I'm not going to room with some gay guy. Dude. Little did you know that three years later, you would be at a gay club holding my hand, prancing into the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Flash, fla- flashback humor, we'll get to it in a minute. But... <laughs> so, back to UT. Uh, yeah, and then... He, and then, when my dad left, I was like, I'm not going to fucking talk to this dude. I'm not going to fucking, like, like, fuck that, you know? Yeah. And then he's like, hey... You're you're new here because I, I I'd gotten there the spring semester and I was like yeah 
And he's like, do you want to go get something to eat? And I'll show you around. And I was like, cool. I was like, just this once. You know, that whole bullshit. Yeah. Fucking one of the most wonderful, warm-hearted, awesome people I've ever met, you know? And, and then all of a sudden, it was like that. It challenged my belief. Dude, my whole my whole concept of what the world was supposed to be just started crumbling from underneath. You know, Maynard says it. Uh, what does he say? This ground is not the rock I thought I thought uh, that it would yeah. be. Yeah, you know, and it, it's true. Keep it's like UT. I'm gonna grab this real quick. Okay, that's cool. But what the fuck am I supposed to say? Well, I don't know if you're like finished. Finish, finish, finish. Oh shit! You have the headphones on, don't you? Uh. So. You know I. I'm like, dude, this, this dude's one of the most wonderful human beings I've ever met, you know, and, uh, he's nice and he's, you know, he he's caring, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, my, my whole belief system is just like crumbling from underneath me. And I'm, I'm thinking, am, am I wrong for feeling this? You know, like, you know, cause the challenges you're on the whole shit since you were like, <laughs> <laughs> I got you some. Some Hawaiian pizza. I got you some pizza. That was for you. A, holy shit, that is hot, dude. Oh, that looks so good. Yeah, man. And I, 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 I still talk to him to this day. You know, it's been what fifteen years. And just, just that alone changed everything. You know. About the way I, I thought I see the world and this is your teacher. What 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 do you mean? This is my teacher. I mean, this is your 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 roommate. I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my, yeah, it was, it was my roommate. Um, and I don't know, man. It's just from there, you know. I mean, I I wasn't like all of a sudden like this open minded dude, you know. I was like, well, this one dude's okay, you know, and then. You know, you just you just meet more and more people, and you you start thinking about ideas, and it changes the way your whole fucking outlook on the world. Yeah, for sure, man. But um, and so I mean, obviously you're you're not homophobic anymore. Like, how do you feel about hom- homophobia in general? Like, like are you? It's a horrible thing. What homophobia is a horrible thing? Yeah, well, you're homophobic. Oh, I mean homosexuality. Oh, my <laughs> bad. Is homo- I my, my words, bad. I was I like, my what the heck? Crossed. My bad. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, you know, everyone deserves, you know, that, that, that right to, you know, to, to live and to love the way they, you know, live, laugh, love. You know, live and to love the way, uh, the way they choose to, or not even a choice if it's the, the way they were born. Yeah, you know, like who who the fuck am I to take that away from somebody? Yeah, you know who the fuck is anybody to take that away from somebody? Well, you can't. Well, I guess you just you can't be in somebody else's experience. You know exactly, what I mean? exactly. You know. Um. So, you know, uh, you have this life changing experience in the dorms or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Meeting this guy, and then, uh, and and. And so how school, you know what I mean? Like, what, what, what are your classes like? How did you graduate under, you know, did you ever get in any trouble, you know, with the, with the administrative office? Like, like in college? No, that I'm surprised. I made the, uh, cause you've gotten in trouble pretty much everywhere else. That you've I, I still been. do. I fucking still do. I can't dude. I fit in. I fit in the fucking world like a square peg, dude. I just do not. Yeah. But don't you think that that's like associated with people? Um, like like just people be, like marching to the beat of their own drum, you know what I mean? And then so often those people get told to sit down and shut up, you know what I mean? And then you have end up with like a lot of neurotic people. If you okay, so for every stage and age, if you break the mold of what the expectation of a person is to, you know, of what the expectation. What do you of, mean break? Break the mold, like like. The, that's, that's such a cliche thing, dude. I, yeah, I, I'm sorry yeah, for that. That's terrible. Like, <laughs> that's terrible. Like, break, break the, the mold. mold. Yeah. What do you? What do you? What, like, what do you mean? Like. So every facet of life has a mold that you follow. You know, you're a teenager, so you put pink hair, and every you know everyone's okay with that. You know, because that's what teenagers do. But if 
if you go against what's accepted, even even what's what's, what's even accepted as um, as rebellion, you know, even rebellion is accepted because it's within the spectrum of understanding. But if you go outside that that spectrum, you know, you you get you get ostracized by yeah. by the community. I mean. As a matter of fact, I was just watching a video on it uh, on YouTube. Yeah, have you have you heard the the, the little girl JoJo Siwa? No. Uh, she's like a little girl. She's a fucking bows and shit. Uh huh. Um, well, she's a seventeen year old girl, and the whole fucking the, everybody everybody on my Facebook. I was like, who the fuck is this girl? Um, we're on Facebooks because apparently she's a seventeen year old girl that still wears bows in her hair and she fucking jumps little, and dances. It's a little weird, yeah. You know, but is it? You know, and and, and that's that's the census. It was like, like act your age you know and she's like i'm just having fun you know like why do i have to act like a, a over sexualized person to be accepted but she's but she's a uh she's a she's a musical performer right so like don't all musical p- performers at that level you know put on a costume yeah but her costume was, was outside the, the realm of normal for 17 she's acting she doesn't act like a little girl she just like the rainbows and glitter and shit and bow, bow ties. And yeah, I can kind of see your point, but I also like wonder how well I would be received if I walked around in a bow tie and a short sleeve button up shirt with Who like gives a shit? A if, high, I mean, high water slacks and a and a and a, a belt that's too tight. Dude, your statement alone tells you how much you oh, respect the idea of what others perceive you as. That. You know, no, no, like maybe the tone suggested that, but I no, dude, that can be interpreted in so many ways, man. Like, um, fuck, what was I saying, dude? <laughs> um, we're talking about JoJo Siwa. Yeah, like I don't think I'm being like prejudgmental or like anything. Well, you did say that was a little weird. You're like, well, that's a little weird that she's wearing bow ties and shit. Like, yeah, I mean, it's a little weird. And, and, but to some degree... So she was slutting around in like fucking little booty shorts. That's cool. <laughs> but to, to some degree, you have to be concerned with other people's perception of you. Because it's going to influence your own life. You know, there's factors beyond your control that are going to have an interplay with other people's perception of you. And it's going to make or break you in a lot of situations. That's getting, why getting a job, you know, going on, a, you know, going on a date, um, you know, just going to work. You show up to work looking like shit. You know what I mean? So t- to some degree, like that's that's a spurious argument. Like to some degree, you have to, you know what I mean? You have to just like accept that, you know, people are going to treat you like shit if you don't dress well to, to a degree. You know, if you show that's up, how you end up. At 67 years old, shaking your fist at clouds. <laughs> Saying, back in my day. God dude, damn, dude. I dude, mean, you're, 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 you're a good arguer, but like, I don't know. I just, I'm not, I'm not like to steal a line from a movie. I'm not even going to dignify my, myself with a, with a response to that, dude. Well, no, I mean, because you could continue to cut it in any way it's semantics it's like a like another spurious argument bitch <laughs> <laughs> i mean it is you know but you know the the question is especially with lit you know and this is like what a, a conversation that i my with my students you know cause sometimes you know my students are right right on the cusp of you know the like the actual real real world you know you're not in real world at 17 you know at 20 you know you're about to be like in the real world uh and that's my question how do i not become the 44 year old at a bar talking about how good it was how fucking pathetic is that by 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 learning why you know young people do things the way they do or i mean i'm sure there's got to be a pattern there's, there's got to be the same reasons we did the shit we did well the reason that, that that happens is because it's a pattern and if you step yourself out of the pattern and you know mm-hmm. just open yourself to judgment you know acting how it is however you want to be or act you know i mean granted it's going to come with 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 public ridicule absolutely but you need to be ready for that you know 
you you can't jump outside those norms and then say oh woe is me the world hates me you just got to absorb it you know and yeah. just realize that that's just the way that you choose to live your life and you're right you're not going to be the fucking you know guy that gets promoted at work you're not going to be the person that people want to you know that at least those kinds of people want to hang out with you know you're you know you're you're, you're going to have your quirky friends you know and uh you know that's that's what's that's what it is you know but then you know there's there's some you know there's some sort of accomplishment and joy in being the guy that everyone likes at work you know yeah you know the the popular you know it's a high school you know popular kid or you know the guy, the guy at work you know like yeah but it's it's like they're like the the roi sucks on that the return on investment does it i mean if you end up being a boss and you're fucking like making hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year maybe, and you're you know, well liked by mean, everybody i i i see your point there but the the amount of energy that that guy had to put toward now I'm not saying that it's like not a good thing to be like proactive about certain stuff but at some point you're going to have to ask yourself how much is your time worth right and if you're putting like like if you're I don't know man it seems like it would it would be it would be a lot of there'd be a lot of energy expelled you know and you wouldn't get the the equal or greater return on on that on on applying care to your appearance and stuff like that dude to we wanted a pizza yeah dude i i, I kind of need another beer do do i run and go get it or <laughs> i'm like oh, hold on i'll be back if you, if you want if you want to take over the show go ahead you know what i'll get it for you but... no no no. that's what i'm saying like do you like do you want to keep talking? I'll go get a beer. I can do that. Okay, I'll, 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 like, give, give me one second. Okay. <laughs> You're fucking up my show. Dude, it's already done, dude. It's already fucked. Well, that was that was college for me, you know. I fit in like a fucking glove. Dude, hand you're in a glove. keep talking. <laughs> Didn't say a word, dude. <laughs> dude, when you went to the door, I was like, uh, uh, I guess I'll keep talking to fucking no one. <laughs> so yeah, so excuse my eating. I like. I know you want to focus on on subject matter. And I do too, because I think that shit's super interesting. But like, I want to go in both directions. So I want to get specific about some of the works that you're like really impressed with. But in addition, I want to go kind of like a little backwards. The works that have shaped my life are the transcendentalists. Period. I read it. Thoreau, Whitman. Okay. You know, Walden, Civil Disobedience, uh, Leaves of Grass. Um, do you think... Um, Age of Reason is is along those lines. I think one of them. I've never read that. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I, the Age of Reason, or is it the like the Age of No Religion, or whatever? I think the row or one of those guys wrote it, and it's supposed to be like basically a like a treatise against religion. One of the first, like by an intellectual. I don't know. I I, I don't ever speak on 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 lit mm. that I don't know because. And they're like, that's a fucking dumbass. He's a lit major and he doesn't know what he's talking about. Sorry, dude. Eat your pizza, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to fucking talk and eat. Um, yeah. You're going to have to roll coming out of your <laughs> mouth, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man. What, 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 what the fuck? I mean. So, so okay, so. Go ask a question. And I'll you, answer it. There you go. You, How about that? You answered the question. You answered the question that you're you're not gonna get into like specifics. And then you mentioned that the transcendentalists were <laughs> were were your favorite. But now let's go back, right? So okay. so you graduate obviously with it with a a bachelor's or a master's in in English lit. A bachelor's in 
English literature and another bachelor's. I double majored. In you always eat. <laughs> you always ask me, I mean, like fucking pizza in my mouth. And a a double major in 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 history. Yeah, that's what I left UT with. Double major. So how does that? So how does a history major end up as an uh, as an English lit teacher? Bad choice. And you know, when I always think of like history teachers, it's always my, my favorite teacher in, at UT. I two. Um, they were both on equal grounds, but different grounds. Uh, one was a history teacher. He, it, I, I took like a year. Like I took like I don't know, fucking nine hours in uh, in U.S. history uh, in in the Civil War, pre pre Civil War. Civil War and then uh, Reconstruction, and I took like I took a shit ton of hours in that because I love the professor and Dr. Forgy and uh, I was just fascinated, you know, like holy shit, like the idea of slaves and people fucking fighting over that, like that's pretty fucking nuts, man. Honestly, you know? when I think of history teachers, I think of dicks, dude. Yeah, you think of that fucking football coach that's like. Just fucking fill in all B and you get a hundred. <laughs> Leave me the fuck alone while I like look at fucking the next week's yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah, he's like film. writing the answers on the chalkboard. He's like, this never happened. Yeah. <laughs> of course, you can't do that now with like everybody with smartphones. Indeed, people still do that shit. Really? Hmm. That's, yeah, that's my idea of the history teacher, you know? I'm like, eh, I don't want to be that shit, you know? Don't. So Again, going with our theme of going backwards in time or forward in time, you weren't, um, the demographics weren't in your favor, right? To, to, to be going to, to University of Texas, right? There were many, many things along the way that could have been hindered that or impeded that rather, right? Yeah, fucking a crazy fucking crazy. Crazy, stupid, fucking ex-girlfriend almost kept me from it. Mm. The fact that the military offered me fucking um, Honduras and then face of choice afterwards. I'm glad you brought that up because that was supposed to be like the largest. The the, yeah, the largest chunk of our podcast, and we're at 38 minutes. How long is this podcast? I, I mean, they're tolerable at like an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, and then after that, like. Like, uh, I think that it's wrong, man. I don't know. I don't know how many podcasts you sit and listen to. Longer than an hour, you know, I'm ready to, like, do the next thing. Next thing, yeah. Um, so, but, so, you got to UT because of the military, kind of. <laughs> yeah, because I fucking hated it, dude. And, you know what? I think, I think uh, the way you got your start with with the military or with with ut like dude i lost my train of thought again dude i'm a wreck today dude it's all <laughs> like mike came in and fucked up my my shit yeah dude it was just <laughs> it was uh my hatred of what i was doing powered me it Thank was the you. catalyst to me reforming my idea of what my life should be and then i yeah, just happened like, to fall in really, the that's really wordy right let's like stick to like solid ideas so you went to uh the military what branch air force air force right yeah um so so what happened in the military what job did you get where did you go well, uh, I was a firefighter. Did you test on your ASVAB? Yeah, dude, it was like fucking stupid fucking low, dude. Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. dude, and you're pretty smart, dude. Like, I, I don't know how so, sometimes, I, I don't know how certain people would get like a 38 or a 20. And then like some people would get like an 80 or a 90. And it was like, wait. You know, I'll I tell mean, you what I got if you really want to know. You're, you're, you're you just be fucking said 38. Shocked. No, I got a 28. Oh, yeah, well, you're, <laughs> dude, but, <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, they were like, dude, this is fucking idiot status, dude. Like, what the fuck? Like, you can do one of two idiot things, idiot. You can be a fucking cop or you can be a fucking fireman. 
and I was like, well, fireman sounds way fucking cooler than being a cop. So, yeah, you know, because even at that age, I may have pretended I was a narc, but I really wasn't a narc in my soul. I was like, well, fucking fireman. And I, be- and I became a fireman. Okay. So you a good chose, job. I, I loved fireman. it. You chose fireman. Yeah. But the, the place you went to, to school was like a, a shithole, right? In North Carolina or something? You mean the, my, my first base? No, 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 no. You're tech school. It was in Goodfellow and by uh, Abilene or some fucking bullshit like that. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah. What, what, what city is that? I just remember the Concho River. San Angelo. San Angelo. San Angelo. Yeah. No shithole. Uh, was there, was there, uh, so there, was, there was Goodfellow. Were there any other bases in the area? No, I went to Lackland, Goodfellow, and Goodfellow was just an isolated base. And all, but like, so do all of the services train there? Do yeah. The firefighters so, there? They do, right? Um, I, yeah, I got some, a, a friend in the, in the Marine Corps right now. He mentioned that all the services, the firefighters yeah. and all the services train the same. So spot. 90% of the base was, uh intel kids training for intel and uh, well like a cer- certain type of intel the other 10 percent of the base were now, just, firemen just to be clear you never worked on classified projects or had a yeah fuck yeah oh I, you yeah yeah okay. firemen well, you have to have a top secret yeah okay so. i mean dude you do you working with nuclear weapons oh and that's right fucking that's right. munitions airplanes but like in other services that's not necessarily yeah. no idea man yeah. no fucking idea um i we had we had an Israeli guy there, an Israeli pilot. Oh yeah, I mean we had like Puerto Ricans and like Jamaicans yeah, like we had this dude from uh, well all over. You know what I mean? It's not just Americans that are in the mili- in the U.S. military. No, no, no. This guy was in the Israeli fucking Air Force. Oh, he came to work in his fucking blue flight oh, suit. So that it's said, an international. Yeah, it's an international so thing. So why the fuck can't military people get jobs as firefighters in the civilian world? They can. I mean. Uh, the U.S. for uh, like the U.S. Department hires them. Private companies hire them. Um, they can't get jobs. At, I mean, you get a a bonus, but a city job that's a local, that's local government. You know, they have the national government has no jurisdiction with you know the 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 certificates don't translate. Yeah. So uh, I didn't know that it was that it was that the Israeli. But was. if you want to go be a firefighter at the National Forest, you can. Because it translates because of the DOD positions. Why, uh, why is it that that's not the case here? Because it is, that is the case in Texas, right? What? Like civilian, like military firefighters can't take their education directly into the civilian world. Again, they can as private contractors or as so, like, uh, yeah, private contractors. Yeah, like with private contractors or yeah, or yeah, ambulance. Like, like you can work for a company and you have your fire inspector two you know and then and then you go to a private company and you're like look i trained with the military i'm fire inspector two certified and they're like oh yeah we need a guy like you why have i, I always heard that from countless people what that that you can't take a firefighter thing i'm like fixated on this because i thought i heard a, that a san antonio fire department guy can't go to houston and become a fire department guy without restarting the process from the, from scratch you can't transfer why because they're they're the ci- it's the city of Houston. This is the city of San Antonio. So there's no you know, standardized way. There's no trade. standardized. Interesting. Like, uh, there's no standardized, like, testing or whatever. Or I don't know, like, certificates. Yeah. Like, if you want to go be a, a firefighter in Houston, you got to reapply from the beginning. That's got to get reformed, dude. The same thing with the cops, right? Like, the cops, I don't think, get enough education to do what they're expected to do. No, they definitely don't. Like, uh, like somebody was making the example the other day to me that, like, nurses like have to have a like a two or four year degree. You know what I mean? They have to get uh, continuing education. They deal with people who are trying to like slap them, kill them. You know, cut their wrists open all the time, and they don't end up killing them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't carry a gun. So th- that was a that was a compelling argument. That I thought about, but anyway, like we can get into the politics politics of that later. I'm just like, what the fuck, you know what I mean? Like, did, that's really you would think something that should be standardized. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is standardized. It's kind of, but I mean, you're you're, you're talking about the city of San Antonio has their own union of guys that are are firemen. You know, 
you know, city of Houston, you know, and then if you combine those, then you're you're talking about a and then then you're talking about one governing body make calling shots for San Antonio and then Houston, which have two totally different needs. Uh, I, see, you know? I see what you mean. Yeah, now you're making- and you know it doesn't yeah it doesn't like it doesn't it doesn't translate because it's like it's like what the fuck you know like you know now all of a sudden you're sharing money you know with with another you know with another department and with another city right i mean i i I don't know a lot about it but because i wasn't i wasn't a city firefighter but i mean but like i said if you want to go and you want to apply for the national forest you know service they'll they'll take you because you're dod if you want to go apply for like fucking shipping or whatever, you know, or you know whatever DOD on the civilian side, they'll they'll take it because it's their certs, you know. I mean, yeah. you you yeah, get a boost. that makes sense. Yeah, but I think we went off a little bit on a tangent there with uh, with the firefighting. So basically, you're a firefighter in the military, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you and I were were wild when we were in the military. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did, did you still want to talk about that? I wasn't wild. I was just, I didn't fit in. Like, well, I, didn't I guess do I was wild. All right. You were wild. Yeah. I wasn't wild. I, I got nitpicked to death. Right. But, but you fought back. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I, they don't like that because yeah, they're like, they, oh, we didn't break this, this guy. And you know, know, and I'll give one thing to the Air Force as much as, you know, I, I went to, uh, MEO, you know, I mean, there, there was some fucking blatant ass fucking racism at, at that place. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it was, it was awful. Where again? Shreveport, Barksdale. Shreveport, Shreveport, yeah. Uh, I mean, there was one instance where one of the, because we, it, it was mostly civil, like uh, DOD local firemen, you know, from that, from south, from southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana, east, northeast Texas, southwest Ar- uh, Oklahoma. Uh, and then you had the reservists that were also from that area. So then all of a sudden you get, you know, Mexican guys and black guys, you know, and they, they did, you know, back then it didn't, you know, they didn't know what they just didn't fit in. You were just like, you were different. Like, oh, okay. you know, you're, you're temporary. This is our. You know, this is our home. You're here temporarily and you will, you know, and you're going to understand that, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, there was one instance where one of the old DOD guys called one of one of the military guys a monkey. He was a black guy. Damn. Yeah. He's serious? like, he said, get your monkey ass off, off the truck. And, you know, my, my buddy, he was like, what the f-? Like, he was like, what the fuck? He's like, monkey. Well, he went to MEO with the, well, the station stepped in and they were like, we'll handle this in house. Don't worry about it. You know, that, that's Chain a fireable in. offense to me, you know? Right. And they had a meeting and the chief who was a fucking reservist from Southwest, he's like, y'all don't understand what, what, what Diddy meant was that he was, he was saying monkeying around because y'all were monkeying around oh in the back God, of the, in the really? fire truck. Dude, and, and you just dealt with that all the fucking time. Uh, so we bit into it, and we called ourselves Brown Town. Ah, uh, wow. And yeah. that you know, and when you're already that, and then you know, already a guy that doesn't fit into, you know that, you know that that world. Yeah. You just. Oh, well, I think there's people that appreciate truth, and then people that appreciate narratives. And if a truth teller comes around. Uh, storyteller, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's gonna be uh, there's gonna be friction there. We went through that shit all the time, you know, and it, like the politics. And this needs this needs to be said. You and I have been planning to say this for a while now. That, that you know, there's a lot of dysfunction and mental health issues with, within the ranks of the military. Oh, and it's yeah. not like it's not like people aren't saying it, but if you haven't gone through it yourself. You know what I mean? If you haven't seen uh, the the brutality that people display with each other, I mean, they're warlike people, but when nobody's around, some some of them, not all of them, you know, there's yeah, there's, some of them, some there's, of them are good guys. And, and in fact, probably most of them are okay. But you know, the ones that have mental health issues that aren't properly screened out, they're the ones that kind of ruin it for everybody. I think people, you know, you you can only tell somebody wasn't in the military when they're like. 
how can something like that at Fort Hood happen? I'm like, because you've never been in the fucking military and know that the utter fucking undercurrent of fucking shit. Rage. You know, yeah. and rage and sexual harassment and racism, you know, racism all, all kinds of way, every way, you know. Racism goes all kinds of ways in the military. It's, I think and, it's, a, it's a problem that we would experience in any large organization if people in that large organization live together, screwed each other on a regular and interchangeable basis. Um, you know, all the stuff that comes with being in the military. It's like a... It's all like the stuff a, that comes with being in an enlisted military. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, it's the, it's the nonstop orgy. You know, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the orgy that never ends, you know. It's uh, it's a Roman orgy, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of uh, you know, maybe you want to use some analogies, and but I won't go into it anyway. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. It is. It is. And there's a lot of uh, I don't know, like everything you said, like the sexual harassment, the the fucking the drugs, fighting, <laughs> the drinking, the prostitution even you know like there's a little bit of that i think i saw i saw an enlisted man fucking pull a gun from his bmw and fucking fire yeah it's fucking <laughs> i was like holy fuck it's fucking wild west dude it's just isolated <laughs> on a few hundred bases across the world yeah oh yeah the, the military i mean you're getting 18 year olds that have n next to no real world experience right yeah almost no right. education and saying here you know welcome to the world of alcohol and abuse you know what? have fun right yeah that's basically it you know what i remember i remember going through basic you know being under that oppressive almost like authoritarian law all the time and then you go to tech school right and it, my tech school was three months and I went to a tech school that had a lot of long school. Right. And so I was there for three months and, uh, and they phase you back into some semblance of normal life. Right. Yeah. So like at first you still have like room inspections. You can't leave your room. You have like curfew, a lot of, right. I remember all that. Yeah. yeah. You have to show up to drill in the morning. You can't leave base, all that. Right. And then, like, two, three weeks later, they'll give you phase two. And phase two is like, oh, well, now you can leave base on Saturdays. And that's it. And then phase three, it's like, okay, well, now you don't have to be back. You know, your curfew is later. And so it grows, right? And progressively, if you're there, like, I think the highest one is phase five, which is... Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, if you're there that long, it's like you go through this experience. It's It's... It, there's a cadence to it and it brings you back to life you're a baby you feel like a baby because you can't leave your crib when you first get there and then oh you're, man and then you're a, and then you're a fucking kid because you get to go outside and play whenever you want and then you're a teenager because you get to go to the store and buy some you know cigarettes some cigarettes and some whatever <laughs> and then you know and so it it phases you back up and i remember feeling this overwhelming joy right dude there's a sense of comfort in all that authoritarian just like you know slowly lifting yeah yeah well, man. Time from phase one to phase it was it, that part was beautiful dude it was absolutely beautiful it was it was yeah yeah man you do you, you remember when uh when you were allowed to go to like the enlisted club or whatever, yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, you, you you could tell like everybody on their first like phase two or whatever the fuck phase it was, right, they would all be wearing their black shirts like tucked into blue jeans. Right? Yeah, yeah, they were... <laughs> yeah, they looked really really cool. <laughs> you know, around I'm like I'm like I have muscles. Where are all the women at? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm fucking dry. I'm go... Some oh, water? Yeah. Right. Unless you want to go, I'll, I'll get. Another... No, no, no. Uh, can I get another beer? Can I get another Coors Light? Yeah. yeah. Okay, who am I occupying? So Joel's gonna go get a beer and a water, and I don't know what the fuck else to say uh, without him guiding me through this because I've never talked into a microphone before. But oh, here my he comes! God damn! There's four. I might switch to water after this beer. 
Definitely. This is like the most unprofessional podcast. So Dude, are these things supposed to be professional? <laughs> well, I was not that not that it was unprofessional, but I think I was trying a little bit harder before. <laughs> so, dude, you you see, you bring me on here, and all of a sudden it all goes to fucking shit, you know? Uh, dude, now imagine good. if you're like a professional, and then you got a guy like me, like fucking, you know, be like this guy's fucking ruining everything. Yeah, I got the bricks, dude. The bricks are semi-professional. The fuck are the bricks? Get bricks. Oh, <laughs> the sound deadening shit. Is that what you're talking about? The whole fucking room of the house, dude. What, what, what was it like before? Were you in the fucking kitchen or something? Yeah, it was hot. There was like uh It's it's you know, still a little hot, but it's getting a little warm. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the, the floor wasn't painted. Or painted. It looks nice. It looks nice. I like it. Yeah, I definitely it's like a, it. I mean, it's definitely a work in progress, but I'd say I'm like 87 percent done, dude. Dude, okay. Here, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna tell you. You're whatever. Like we're we were talking about about the moment of fucking. I I remember. I've always driven. I love Mustangs, right? I've always driven a Mustang. Yes, dude. And uh, that was like I had a Mustang when I was in when I well, was. Well, we in the were military. in the military, and we dreamt of becoming Tom Cruise. So we agreed, or yeah. we promised each other that we would get Kawasaki Ninjas, right? So they would be like the cool airman with the flight jacket riding that. That was like our dream, right? But <laughs> neither of us ever got Kawasaki Ninjas, but we both, by coincidence, only ended up getting. Mustang. Mustang. Oh yeah. shit! You did have a Mustang. Yeah. I have a, I had wow. a, a 1995 Mustang GT. I remember 5. that. Yeah, dude, it was black, wasn't it? It was white. The white? interior was solid black. Uh, I, remember, yeah. I remember. I remember something about it being and black. You had a box body, right? Yeah, I had a Fox body. Uh, well, I love that car, and I fucking like me. Me and my buddy John, uh, he had a 280Z, and uh, or not not a 280Z, uh, the Datsun, whatever, fucking badass, fucking old 1978 car. <laughs> I think it was called a 280Z or a 240Z or something like that. And um, we'd, we'd be able to, like detailing our cars and racing them, taking them to the track and shit. And, and I, I, I loved that. And the, the military had given me that, but I was so empty beyond that car. And I was like, I, I can't just focus on this car as my sole source of happiness. And I'll, I'll never forget, it was a fucking cold January. It was someday in January. And I get in my car and I turn it on. It was a fucking badass car. Like, I mean, you know, I had the fucking sounds and shit. And, uh, and I'm sitting in there. I'm just holding the steering wheel and I'm like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go to work. I hate what I do. Like, is this going to be like, and I had another couple of years to go and I was like, yeah. is this going to be every day? You don't get to leave when, I mean, you sign up for a contract and you're bound by law. Yeah, you know, that's it's it's nuts. And, and it's not even law. It's like, I mean, they could fucking hang you if they want to. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're on a whole different like level of justice in, right, in that yeah. place. Justice and law. The UCMJ and all that is brutal, dude. Uh and I was I was just like this this can't be my life. This can I hate every day that I wake up and I take the longest possible route to work. You know, because I fucking hate it. And then, magically, I'm watching a fucking movie, and I hear Thoreau, a quote from Thoreau, and I bite into it, dude. I'm just like, you know what? You know, because, like, the whole station was watching it or something, and they were like, oh, stupid-ass fucking bullshit, liberal shit. That's all I needed to hear to be like, well, then I like that, you know? Yeah. And I fucking bit into it, and I was like, well, if that's the shit you hate, then this is the shit I'm going to like. And I and I bought Walden, and I would like carry it to the fire station, like I carried it. You know, go. there's like there's a there's a subconscious like component going on there. There's, I mean, there's the little boy is inside like rebelling against mommy or daddy. Did you ever rebel against mom or dad growing up? No, dude, you remember me in high school? No, I know you had an awesome family life, but like so many people like have their quote unquote traumas or you know micro traumas or whatever you whatever you want to call it. From from their parents, from the way their parents were with each other, but I at least I always remember seeing your parents were very well adjusted, well adapted. Yeah, yeah, together. absolutely. It was like, dude, I didn't I, even drink. Remember, y'all used to have fucking parties, and I would be like, no, I've uh, 
Yeah, I, I got to go to sleep at nine because we have a drill right, night right, in the right. morning. <laughs> yeah, but your, I mean, your your parents, your parents have always been nothing but pleasant. So how does that? I mean, I mean, you performed relatively well. So is your brother. Like you guys are. So so I mean, what's it like for somebody who had like a perfect childhood, because you basically did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, not, not perfect. Not, I mean, you maybe know? you weren't. <laughs> Like, I had a good, I had a good right. family upbringing. Absolutely. You know, I'm never going to deny that. You know, we grew up poor, you know, we grew up in the, you know, in a bad side of town, but my family unit was, and my upbringing was always, you know, was solid, you know, you know what? My dad worked too much and he wasn't there all that often, you know, like most, most lower, dads, you know, yeah, most yeah. Dad, you know, he wasn't there, but you know, solid relationship, you know, with my mom and you know, my, my dad was there, he, he would, he would, he would do stuff with us and you know, it was, it was good. It was solid. You know, I don't know where that rebellion. Or, I don't know. I just yeah, it seemed because it was going real hard. You were listening to anti flag like in the military and like yeah, uh, dude. I just when when you wake up and you're like, in 20 years I'm gonna be that 44 year old dude that yeah he like retired from the military, but you know you're not gonna be happy with yourself because your whole identity is built within this structure. structure. You know, I was, you know, and then the words came to me and, you know, it's like a fake it till you make it. I, I faked that I read all this, you know, literature garbage. Uh, it's not garbage, but I, I faked it. You know, I faked that I was that guy and then I became that guy. You know, it's the perfect example of fake it till you make it. Do you, but I mean, don't you like the same thing with, uh, with the military, you know, it's like, uh, do you think that that's a mature thing to do to try to fill a role? You know, it's the same thing with like Tom Cruise, you know what I mean? We were trying to fill a role we were we had built a narrative for ourselves, and we we're trying to go along those lines. Do you think that maybe that's what you've done at any level with literature? Like you romanticize the idea of the literature teacher. I definitely don't romanticize the idea of the literature but initially, teacher. Initially, when you were pursuing that, that path. I didn't want to be a teacher. I didn't. I just. Oh, that's right. Exactly. I just wanted to study. I just wanted to study Thoreau. I yeah. wanted to study Whitman. I wanted. I, I almost studied philosophy, but philosophy didn't study Thoreau and Whitman. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm choosing the literature. As a matter of fact, uh, I got into two schools. I got into Texas A&M and. I got into their wildlife fisheries management because I wanted to be a game warden. I remember, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, it's been, it's been a been long a time. Yeah. Uh, and then I got and then right at the last minute, I got accepted to UT, and the and UT was like, well, you know, you, you you can be in the College of Liberal Arts. So I was like, do I wildlife fisheries management or do I follow, you know, liberal arts English literature? And on whim, I was, uh, and it wasn't a whim. It just was like it felt right. It felt like the right decision to make. You know, yeah. I was like, and you know, everybody's like, "What are you going to do with that?" I was like, "I don't know." And I just know I wanted. I just you knew were like, I wanted my to boats study. And hose, bitch. Yeah, yeah, boats and hose. Uh, I just knew I wanted to know what you know. And this is a quote from Thoreau: "What they had to teach." Right. You know, I went to the woods, lived liberally. You know. Is find what it had to teach. And I completely fucked that, you know, I completely diced that quote up, but I wanted to know what it had to teach. And it taught me, dude, it, holy shit, if the fucking lights didn't go on in the room, you know, and all of a sudden I fit, dude, I was, I was not, not cool. I wasn't ever a cool guy, but I was a guy that was liked for exactly who he was for the first fucking time in my life. You know, and I got picked on. In, you can in tell school. when you talk about it, you get like a like this little glint in your dude. It's like, man, it's like a fucking seed getting just enough water to fucking blossom into a fucking, you know, to to come out of the ground. I mean, that's what it felt like. Uh, it was incredible. You know, my my whole you know I was you know middle school I got picked on in middle school and then high school I didn't get picked on. You know, I was, I was a good looking dude, but. I had trouble in ROTC. I had trouble with the Colonel guy and I had, you know, and, and, you know, Sergeant Creasy, you know, oh shit, I don't know if I should say his name. He really liked me, you know, but what by junior year, I fucking, I got kicked the fuck out. You know, I didn't, fit, I didn't fit, you know, and I was angry and I would in, you know, I'd get in trouble a lot. And, and then I, I just was like listless. I was fucking, and then I joined the military listless. And when you don't have a direction, and then, and then I got to UT and it was like, 
the lights Holy turned shit. on. Holy shit. You know, that's, that's I was like, I man. like this guy. I like who this guy is. And this guy could choose and be whatever the fuck he wants to be. And no one has to be okay with it because the only person that's okay with it, me, is okay with it. And I was, you know, understanding that was awesome. Did you ever have a problem balancing, like, um, school with party at UT, like, and, and, and that extend into, like, normal life? Yeah, you know, you, you, you college at that, you know, at a, it, UT's fucking difficult. Um, you know, because I, I got my master's at, at, at the lake, and, dude, the master's was, like, Dude, I was like fucking. It was like getting in the fucking. It was like UT was the fucking race car, and my master's program was like a golf cart. It was like so uh, fucking easy. I was like, what? Really, I was like, dude? The way UT had 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 structured and prepared me, you know, for the difficulty. So the art of college at that, at least at a college like that, is how to balance fun and school and how much fun can i get away with before it starts eating into school because if i fail i gotta go home you know but if i don't party and have fun then i'm gonna hate this place but you're not even worried about that kind of shit at at, at a master's degree or graduate program no nah, but the content was easy it was easy like yeah but i mean so what are you doing you're like netflixing and chill in between classes and, and oh dude Dude, I used to fucking, uh, I, I, I had a bike and I, I used to like to fish and I used to fucking wrap the fishing pole next to my bike. And then I would go fucking bike from UT all the way through downtown Austin and like in the like little green belt things uh-huh. that would go down the lake. And then I'd go fucking fish. I would skip class to go fish, you know, and just dude, I was like, holy shit, like I, I'm fishing and I'm, I'm at UT and I'm fucking studying like some off the wall shit. It was, yeah, dude, it was, I mean, and then that's, you know, and then I started drinking and I played rugby and, uh, you know, rugby was partying and then I joined the Hellraisers and they were all about partying, but not, not failing. So, so Americans aren't super like familiar with rugby. Maybe apart from knowing about it, like what's rugby? Rugby's like, if you took, football down to its fundamentals and didn't let it stop that's rugby you advance the ball forward only you can't pass it forward it's all running running and passing backwards like laterals you know tackles tackles same tackles tackle i mean you you can't just block a dude out of nowhere you have they to tackle the guy that shit's no crazy. you just you wear a polo shirt and short shorts and that's what you do <laughs> then you go out there it's you like, you get like beat soccer the fuck with up. The football it's like you're gonna dress up like you're gonna go play soccer but somebody's gonna beat the shit no out of you. dude even not even soccer because soccer they were like little v-neck the little sporty v-necks uh you wear you wear a fucking collared polo shirt like with a three button up like if you were to tuck it into khakis you'd be like oh that guy's dressed up to go like I don't know, have a beer or something. Right, right. You know, uh, you're just like good. that, and then you you get the. Well, maybe sh- you're like uh, going to like a nerdy bar or something. <laughs> yeah, like it's just kind of it's kind of weird. It's like very English. It's very like oh, we were. Let me wear colors. my polo, my fucking shorts, and go drink the the shit out of this Guinness. Yeah, dude, like like we're gonna drink the shit out of some stouts and some German fucking Oktoberfest, and I'm gonna come through with that wop afterwards. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, and fucking girls love fucking rugby players, you know. And uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. And uh, that's when I first took up drinking, and you know that was cool. That was fun. Um, I was 25. But... That's cool, man. How did you get to UT by scholarship? <laughs> I had to transfer in. So I, I went the back oh, you way. Said, I think you said that or may, alluded to it. Yeah, I was the bottom half of Holmes High School class of 2000. I was like, like, ranked. well, yeah, I mean, you had the military in between, but I guess, you know, before co- before college and then before the military was. Yeah, that, that was my academic record was a really, really, really shitty high school student uh, that got kicked out of ROTC. Um, you know, so you, you, you can't approach UT with that. And uh, I went, I backdoored it. I got into, uh, I, didn't get, I didn't get into Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech had a program for enlisted men uh, where you can take classes. 
well technically by taking classes you're technically a student so i took classes and i was like if i study really 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 hard and i get two a's then that's a 4.0 and i need 20 and i was doing all the research i was like i need 24 hours of 4.0 to maybe have a chance to transfer into ut and i took two classes and i took two classes and then i just bit into it and i i, I went to go visit rustin you know that's where louisiana tech is and I, and I just been into it. I was like, I'm a bulldog. You know, even, even though I didn't get into that college, I was back doing it through an enlisted thing. But the way, the way college it saw it, you were a fucking student at Louisiana Tech. Um, and I use... That's well, I, crazy. So yeah. you kind of game the system a little bit. You slide Well, I mean, I, I needed the grades, but I didn't have to apply to get into to Louisiana Tech. No, I mean, I mean, you gamed the oh, system. Oh, gamed the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Lover. And uh, then when I got out of the military, I came to San Antonio and I needed six more, six or nine more hours. So I took them at SAC. And I was like, you can't fuck this up. Like, you're back home. You know, you're going to focus on one thing and one thing. I think it was 12 hours. I think I needed 12 hours. I took 12 at Louisiana Tech and I took 12 at SAC. Um, and I was like, you can't fuck this up. You got a year to keep it straight. And maybe you might get into UT. Your hands are shaking. You're like, you're to keep it straight. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep it fucking straight. Uh, because I had left, I had left the military, dude. Oh god damn. <laughs> I was not a very good airman, and I rebelled, and I was like, fuck this, you know. I'm not, I'm not gonna listen to y'all anymore. So I started growing my hair. God damn, don't. Uh, if there's anybody listening While to that you were in, you were growing your hair long? They had to fucking sit my ass down to the barber. My fucking sergeant was like, I got to escort you to the barber shop to make sure that you're getting the regs. And why would you do that? Because I was like, fuck them. I was like, fuck them. You were telling em. them no? Why? I, I fuck them. <laughs> how old were you? 23. Okay, so maybe that had a, something to do with it too, right? I wouldn't change it. I'd make that same decision today. I don't know about that, man. I do not know about that. I think you would. I think you'd reconsider. You're well, there. Close your eyes. We're, we're back. It's fucking 2002. You're getting the shit pulled out em. of you. <laughs> Dude, so Le I had legit, a Metallica man. shirt, you know, because I was like, I was the guy that drove the loud Mustang around base. You know, I was that asshole, you know? <laughs> And anytime I could get out my uniform, I would, and I'd wear like, I'd wear anti-flag shirts. I'd listen to anti-flag in like the, in the fire truck, People, you know, and, but I'd make it known that I was listening to no effects and anti-flag and fucking Metallica. And I had a, I had a big Metallica, I, I bought a Metallica shirt that said a rebel and it had a skull like that was on fire, like a, like a skull that was on fire. And I was like, I'm going to wear that shirt the day I get out of the military. And I'm gonna tell them to fucking eat shit, you know. And I and I pinned it on my wall in the dorms, and they would do dorm inspections, and they're like, "What the fuck is that?" You know. And I'm just like, "It's not against regs. I can have it. It just says rebel, you know." Yeah. I, you know. So they're like, "Whatever." So the day came when I finally, like, man, it was bad because, dude, again, it was it's racism, it's it's hazing to a. It wasn't even hazing because they weren't hazing me into a group. They were. You know, they were just doing that stuff to us just to be fucking fucked up. You know, they, they would fuck us up. You know, every single guy that I knew there that was a minority had an Article 15. Yeah. Well, you we know? Talk, this is something we talked about in the beginning. It's just fucking crazy, crazy shit all it's the time. It's just crazy shit all the time. So when they, you know, and I had, they, I had a sergeant that was, he was a good guy and he was really looking out for my best interest. And that's the one that, that got me the, he was like, Hey, I got you orders to Honduras. If you take them, you can take your, you know, base of choice afterwards, you know, it was Nellis, uh, whatever Dude, the one. Not that Honduras is a terrible assignment. That sounds actually kind of interesting. And I was like, nah, man, nah. Like if, if I, if I, sell out now then i'll never get what i want which was to go to ut and because i was already like on the ut train like i was gonna go and i was again i was using ut as a symbol for what i wanted to be and i was shoving it in the face of everybody like i'm gonna be at ut and they're like you fucking liberal fucking hippie you don't love america and i was like well those kids know what they're doing you know whatever and um they switched 
my my supervisor from that guy that was a real caring real, real awesome guy to this and then i'll fucking call him out i'm fucking on air his name was fucking slap staff sergeant oh do you want to do that i don't give a i don't give a fuck fuck him he was a racist he was a racist okay. he was a clear racist he didn't like me and he, I didn't like him, and he was out. They were out to fucking think. His name was Sergeant Thompson, and he was from. He was a proud Arkansas fucking dude that was like, "You are fucking up my Air Force and but people he like wasn't you." Like the, he wasn't like the typical. It's not like you. The the image you get of cops is like they're all like that, right? Especially right now with everything going on in the media, but like. You don't get that image or or even that reality from a lot of people in the military no well this guy was and i think they did that on purpose they were like we're gonna we're gonna pair the most dickhead of us to make his life fucking miserable right they were trying to, to use you to make his life miserable no, no 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 they were trying to they were using him, him to make your life to like make my life miserable and because they they knew that he was a good old boy yeah like he was a good old like boy him. and he's like dude we had to do with a Confederate flag in our text. Shit, like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Shit like that, and uh, that's the kind of guy he was. And uh, he was the one that to escort me to get fucking haircuts and shit. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess they're in there too. You know the I mean? last day, he he was escorting me while I was getting uh, processed, and he was there, and I had my my fucking BDUs on, and I I turned in my my military ID. And, you know, I signed all that bullshit. Uh, I didn't even know what I was looking at, what I was signing. And I signed it. And I was like, well, does that mean I'm out? And they're like, you're out. And I was like, so I'm, I don't have to conform to any military standard anymore. And she's like, no, you're out. Like, you're, you're done. And I walked out and uh, it was Staff Sergeant it Thompson. It wasn't at the personnel office? Yeah, yeah. But uh -huh. he, he had to, yeah, to escort, escort me there. And then when That's I came funny. out, there was an MP along with him to escort me off the base. Uh-huh. And he was like, get off my base, you fucking piece of really? shit. Really? He yeah. actually said that? And I said, oh, John Wayne shit? dude, yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, piece of shit. I was like, oh, guess what I'm going to do? And I fucking opened up my shirt. And I had that Metallica shirt that was like Rebel. And I was like, you can fucking, you can eat fucking shit. Oh, and I don't give a fuck. Oh, you bird. can't tell me any fucking thing what, what to do. And I was like, get the fuck out of my way so I can drive out of this shithole. You know, and that, that was at the time when I already had, I, I had uh, signed up for classes at SAC in the spring. Uh, so you know, you were already like I got in my car, I fucking played Green Day, like, haha, ha, you're dead in my Mustang. And I fucking like, it was a straight shot at Barksdale Eastgate. And I was just like, Woo, fucking way. throwing the finger at the guy, like, uh -huh. the, like stupid movie shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, oh, my whole life, you know, in the backseat of my Mustang. Right. You know, I got I got here, and then that that Monday I had to go to class, and and I was in class at, at SAC, and I was like, you can't you cannot exit like that, right. and then fuck this up, you know? Right. It's like all that momentum. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I don't know if you remember those years of my life when I was just studying and shit, and I studied, and then fucking December came along and got the letter that was like, congratulations, Mr. Ramirez, you've been accepted to the 2003 freshman class at the University of Texas. And I was, you know, I was like- Damn, dude, you started <laughs> out like so sarcastic about English and now you're almost like, I don't know. Dude. Goofy about it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I love teaching lit. I love teaching literature. This is um, the politics. It's the politics that, that ruins it. Same thing with the military. Yeah, but school. here it's taller. You know, these these people are educated. They're they understand. They're less... You know, there's 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 not like the military. Most oh, okay. teachers that I know are very caring people. But that... I guess what I mean is that it, that always seems to be like the biggest sore thumb is like politics, office politics. Yeah, I'm 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 okay. You know, I I get along great with my colleagues. I'm not that guy anymore because again, we're all like minded people. We have disagreements. You know, they're they're civil disagreements. Um, but yeah, man, and uh, the the quote, uh, if you don't mind me uh, yeah, yeah. saying so, was, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately to front only the essential facts of life and see, and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. Say it again with a little bit more inflection for my dumbass. Okay. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately 
to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. Ah, uh, yeah, that's... Dude, that... Do you boo when I, do your best life? Yeah, dude. Pretty much, right? Not, dude, I mean, even at four... I'm, I'm 40 next week. I don't know if you know that. You know, and, and I look back from 20 to now, you know, and it's like, not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. And I felt, you know, I feel, you know, that... Fulfilled. I'm yes, I'm fulfilled. You know, I'm not awesome, rich. Dude. You know, yeah. I'm not not anything. You know, but uh, as a matter of fact, I got into a wreck two days oh. ago. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought you said something else. No, no, no. I got I got into a wreck. I flew off the fucking highway. Really? Yeah, and I hit an F two fifty going backwards on oncoming traffic. On four ten. On one ten? fifty one, I hydroplane. <sighs> it fucking rained, and my I just hit a puddle, and I went fucking sailing off a fucking ten foot embankment in my car. And my Mustang, my black Mustang, and went was going backwards in the traffic and then hit an F two fifty. Oh and, yeah. and I was like, dude, just I just and, and I, I walked off the I walked out the car, nothing the only thing I had was a little burn on my leg from the airbags. And I was like, Holy shit, that could have gone any number of ways. You know, and I had like this whole like idea of like life and I was you know, and I, it's like, man, you know, I'm I'm happy, you know, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I wouldn't change anything, you know? That's awesome. Uh, you know, and that all stems from just, like we were talking about, you know, with the JoJo Siwa thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> fucking just doing whatever it is that you feel you are, regardless of how, it, how you fit into what's accepted into those societies. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're always going to be happy being you. You're never going to be, you, you might be a little bit happy being somebody else that, people want but you it, to be but it's not sustained yeah it's, it's not sustained, sustained yeah, you know yeah. it's, it's not a core you know it's not a foundation of happiness it's a it's a mirage of happiness fuck it amen yeah fucking beautiful yeah i know it's kind of i know you get like I, I, oh I, I shit to go out on that actually it's it's been about an hour and 20 minutes so, yeah. oh shit okay yeah, that was a, that was a good note to end it on say what we're saying Say what one more time? The whole, the whole, the whole two sentences that you ended with that fucking <laughs> splurge of beauty. We're gonna have to go back, <laughs> dude. I don't, do, I don't. I'm like, oh shit, what did I say? <laughs> you know, we'll just go back that. And quote it, if yeah. you know, you're happier. You know, just being being who you are is a foundation of happiness. You know, uh, God damn, I can't repeat what I said. That was, <laughs> it was dude, pretty. That was, it was one of those like downloads, dude. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if I could if well, I could repeat we, that. I mean, we got it down, so we could go back and quote it. Later. Yeah, it's 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 written in ink. What can I? Written in electronic ink. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, man. Well, uh, I had a good time. Uh, I think uh, I think we exhausted ourselves jumping back and forth between like analytical mode and retarded mode, but but it worked out good. I like it. <laughs> I think we're gonna keep it. Uh, so that's going to do it for us. Uh, well, uh, dude, I don't even have my headphones, man. I need a. You, you, you got to do your little DJ thing. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Thanks, thanks for that assist, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> uh, man, where is it? Where is it? Go for it. All right. North, how you doing? Dude, I haven't seen what you in a long time. Fuck? Good, how are you? Sometimes when you're here